All right, so again, hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Diana. I'm an account manager here at ActiTime and ActiPlans. And today I'm very happy to present a new feature that we're very excited about called work scheduling. Now, this is a very unique and interesting feature that sort of revolutionizes our existing product, ActiPlans. So I'm very excited to share that with you. The feature itself is quite customizable and quite flexible, and that's why today's agenda uh, is going to cover a couple of scenarios and a couple of applications for this feature. So we're going to talk about different kind of scenarios and how the feature can be used uh, in line with them. Uh, so we'll of course briefly go over what is work scheduling, briefly discuss ActiPlans as a product, and then towards the end I'm going to present you with your special bonus as a way of saying thank you for attending our webinar. And then we'll open the floor up to a Q&A where you can send your questions in and I'll be happy to address them uh, during the webinar. In case I don't get to your questions straight away, please don't worry. I will be sure to address all questions by email afterward in case I don't get to them. All right, so let's uh, get started and talk a little bit about what is work scheduling. Now, work scheduling is a very interesting feature. Uh, the idea behind it uh, lies in the ability to um, plan and allocate our resources and our work time or work statuses. So as some of you may know, ActiPlans is a tool designed for leave and absence management. So it's a way to plan out absences, see the absences of your colleagues, uh, approve absences. But then there's also the other side of the coin, which is the working time. How do we plan that time? How do we indicate in a calendar format what we're spending the working time on? And this is where work scheduling comes in. So work scheduling ultimately is a functionality that allows you to indicate, plan, and communicate work-related activities or statuses on a very user-friendly and easy-to-use calendar format. So what can be gained from using work scheduling and um, using the new work scheduling feature. The first and foremost, of course, is planning. So this is the ability to plan out work activities, uh, and again, in a very user-friendly calendar format. Uh, second, of course, is communication. So it's a way for users to indicate to their managers or to their colleagues that they will be in this status of work or they will be working on one thing as opposed to another. The third, of course, is visibility. So it's the ability of all users to see what their colleagues are doing, what they're working on, or perhaps even where they're working from, which we'll discuss a little bit later on today. And last but not least, something that none of our products would be complete without is the statistics. So the ability to gather reports and insightful data that helps us analyze and make optimal decisions for our teams and our processes moving forward. All right, so why don't we have a look at ActiPlans and then discuss some of the scenarios that we've prepared for you today. Now, uh, for those of you who aren't maybe that well familiar with ActiPlans, again, ActiPlans was initially designed as a leave management solution. Uh, the idea here is that we have a calendar format, such as the one you're seeing here. Users are able to drag and drop across the days in order to request or indicate an absence. A manager, in turn, can approve this absence, reject it, deny it, or make changes to it as needed. And as a regular user, of course, you see exactly when your colleagues are working and when they're away, so you can plan your absences accordingly, and everyone is on board and aware of working time and absences. So it's a very handy uh, tool for leave management. But uh, now we're happy to say that not only for leave management, so these white squares that are the default ones that refer to working time, we have decided to tackle those in the new feature and introduce the capability of planning the working days as well. And that takes us to our new feature, which is work scheduling. So let's head over to our work scheduling tab and take a look at the first scenario here. So if we head over to work schedule, we're, we're going to see a similar format, a similar kind of calendar, also color coordinated. And in this particular scenario, we've indicated our various absences, uh, or sorry, our various statuses as locations. 
So in this scenario, we have users working from different kind of locations. So we have on a legend at the top here, the London office in a purple color, Brooklyn office in the blue color, Staten Island office in a green color, Queens office orange color, and the very interesting remote work, which of course has become more and more relevant with COVID and other things happening in the world. So remote work is a very popular scenario and we've heard from many of our um, clients, many of our users, that it would be very helpful to know who is working from office and who's working remotely. So what work scheduling does for you in this case is it allows you to see on a very easy visual format exactly who is working and from where, from which office. So if we drag our mouse here, we can see the purple color indicates the London office. So Daniel will be working from the London office the entire week of May 23rd, uh, whereas Andrew will be working from the Queen's office and again Daniel will be working remotely all week from the week of May 16th. So again what this allows us to do is for users to communicate in this calendar format exactly where they will be working from in the coming weeks or months ahead. It also allows managers to indicate this for the users. So it can be used as a planning tool. Managers can indicate where they want which office or which location they want users to be working from so it works as a sort of schedule in that regard so again the feature is quite flexible you can either use it as a tool mo mostly for communication or you can use it as a tool for planning from the side of management so let's have a look at the reporting capability of this feature to see and just briefly go over what kind of options the reporting gives us so if we head over to the reports, there's a report that in this scenario will be referred to as work locations. And here, what we can see in this particular configuration of a report is how much total time is spent at each given location. So we see here user by user and month by month, how much time is spent in each location. So what can we do with this data? Well, first of all, of course, we can see where most of our employees or where more, more time is being spent rather than the other where more time is being spent in one office rather than the other. And we can also see dynamics. So if we configure the report to show us a month by month view, what we can see perhaps is a pattern whereby more people are starting to work remotely. So we see that maybe towards the end of the year, more and more users are working remotely, or maybe during certain seasons, such as the flu season, users are working remotely more often. And this kind of data, of course, helps us to have a better understanding of our work statuses and be able to plan um, our workflow internally more effectively. All right, so that was the first scenario relating to where users are working from, so using work scheduling for that. Now let's have a look at a second scenario here. Now the second scenario is a very is another interesting one, and this is the ability to use work scheduling for projects. So as we can see here on the legend on the top right, we see flight operations project, spaceship building project, alpha project. So we have a line of projects that users can indicate on the calendar to show what kind of projects they're working on right now and for how long. So at the top is my schedule, at the bottom are my colleagues, so I can also see exactly what projects my colleagues are working on. Moreover, as a manager, I can use this as a planning tool to, to allocate projects and indicate which users are going to be working on which projects and for what period of time. Now, another useful thing if we're looking at this interface and this particular scenario is the ability to set up the default the default squares as, for example, idle time. And by doing so, we know exactly who is not currently working on any project. So who uh, can we allocate a project to? Or we can also alternatively see that somebody is currently busy with two or even more projects. So there's no idle time there. We certainly shouldn't be assigning any more projects to this particular user. Okay, let's have a look and just spend a little bit of time talking about the data relating to this kind of scenario. So if we go to reports, the report is now of course called projects. Um, we're gonna see not only total time spent on each given project and month or any other uh, date range option available. Um, so we see the total time spent and we can also see, for example, in this case, total idle time. And in this way, we can draw conclusions from that and have insightful data on how long we've been working on certain projects, who's working on those projects, who was participating in them, even if just for a day or two. 
All right, so let's have a look at our next scenario. In the next scenario, the project, uh, the work scheduling will be used to indicate shifts. So in some scenarios for some companies, shift planning is a very important part of your daily operations. In this case, you can create the statuses as evening shift, night shift, morning shift, or any kind of shift that you designate in your company. And again, use this interface as a scheduling platform and a visibility platform. So colleagues can see when, what time, what shift other users will be working. Managers can also see the entire picture of the entire team and and be able to allocate and plan accordingly. Now, if we head over to the reports, again, we'll see uh, our reports regarding shifts. And in this case, what the data could be helpful, uh, the way the data can be helpful is we can see, for example, if one user has had a lot of time with night shifts, and that would be helpful data if we don't wanna overburden him with night shifts anymore. So in the future, we'll know that we need to allocate some less night shifts, more morning shifts, more day shifts. So all of this can be uh, visible here, uh, thanks to our data that we gather. And again, we can look at the current state, we can look at the past to analyze our past, and of course, we can always have a peek uh, at the future in order to see what our plans are for shift planning. All right, let's have a look at our last scenario here. And the last scenario is another very interesting one. And this scenario we refer to as events. So as many of you know, companies often conduct training sessions that are held on an annual or sometimes even more frequent basis. There's also events like conferences, company retreats, and maybe as a manager or an HR manager, I want to plan out who will be attending which event and when. So who will be participating? And I can do that here on this interface. Alternatively, it can be used for users to report when they are on a conference or when they are uh, training or when they are on the participating in a company retreat. Moreover, if we're using active plans for allocating absences as well, this interface will show us when users are away. So if we look at the grayed out boxes, this means that the user is not available. It's a non-working time. So in this particular case, this is a vacation. So if I'm on vacation during this period, uh, the HR will be able to see that and not schedule a certain training for me and schedule it perhaps in a different for a different group or a different time. So again, a very interesting, very useful tool in terms of visibility and being able to plan participation in company events. All right, in terms of the reporting capabilities, again, if we look at the reporting capabilities, we can see uh, not only the duration of time, but just the fact of attendance of certain uh, events as well. So if we wanna have a look and dive into one particular kind of event, uh, we can see uh, how much, uh, how many users participated, what was the duration of that event. So again, it's a work-related activity that sometimes we don't always know how to plan out and how to group into teams. And this kind of information helps us. Here we can see a full breakdown of who attended the, certain, the event or the training session and when exactly it was attended. Okay. So as you can see, uh, regardless of what you are using work scheduling for, again, to reiterate, the benefits to be gained are the ability to plan out these work statuses, the ability to communicate with one another. So for users to communicate to their managers where what they will be working on or where they will be working from. Visibility, so the ability to see where your colleagues are or what your colleagues are working. And of course, statistics and insightful data that you can gather from the information about these work statuses and work-related activities.